not a YouTuber, just like making videos. And today I'm going to talk about the Emmett Till movie. I'm not going to do a movie review because I don't want to spoil it for you guys. But spoiler, he dies. <laughs> I'm kidding. Now we all know how the story goes. But the Emmett Till movie is very good. I think it's on M MGM. The same network uh, Godfather Harlem uh, uh, comes up. And the movie been out, I don't know how long. I've seen the movie in my queue and I'll uh, debate myself whether I want to watch it or not. Like, eh. But if you don't have, I think it's on MGM. I could be wrong. If you don't have MGM, get that free trial just to watch that movie. I'm like, um, it's good. Now there's some people, they don't like the whole uh, black people suffering. Black people are powerless. You know, against our circumstances, the big white evil boogeyman. I get it. That's why the movie Detroit, which was an excellent movie, was not prop popular because it's one of the movies that'll piss you off because, you know, we were powerless. And black people are still sort of powerless. It's very, we got, we still got modern day lynchings, you know. Um, but the movie explores things that, that I didn't think about, like hints. How did they get Emmett Till in the first place? Why didn't the people who, who was Emmett Till's caretakers at the time, the Guardians, because I know he was from Chicago or staying with some relatives in Mississippi, how they let him grab him? You know, they came to the house and grabbed him. And also, um, so there was a whole kerfuffle about why didn't the guy protect Emmett Till, but I'll let you watch the movie and he explains. <laughs> and, um, uh, like when Emmett Till cat called that white woman, um, she, uh, Carolyn Bryant or whatever, uh, like, like they didn't just grab him immediately. It was like a couple of days passed, you know, because they didn't know who he was because remember he was out of town, uh, when he, uh, and so forth. And, um, then also one thing the movie explored is about black single motherhood and how black women characters uh, come under uh, cross-examination when dealing with their son. Hence, the actress who played her, I forgot her name. Her last name, I think, is Deedwire or something. But she was, this is a gorgeous girl who played Emmett Till. She was questioned on where's Aunt, where was Emmett Till's father at. Now, um, her father, Emmett Till's father, uh, died in the war. Well, they say he died in Europe 10 years ago. The movie took place in 1955, so he, you know, most likely he died in the war, or you know, World War II, or, or so forth. Um, and you know, since she did have a boyfriend, she did have a um, fiance or whatever in the movie. Um, but that's the thing that the her Emma's Till mother's character was being assassinated. And I think, oh man, she's a single mother, or whatever. She's not married. Kids gonna run around and be miscreants and so forth. I'm like, yeah, just like what we do today. Um, but still, Emmett Till mother. I'm like, was I'm like, she was a stand up woman. I'm like, this is they, they don't make them like that anymore. <laughs> we talk about modern women now. They don't make them like that. Could you imagine? You know these. Uh, 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 Black young men who were uh, murdered by police, unarmed and murdered by police, if their mother had to stand trial, like Freddie Gray or uh, Mike Brown, if they said, oh, well, was his mother married? Who's the father? Where's the father at? You know, we don't do the, that. You know what I'm saying? If someone does do that, we, we call him a coon, a buck, a buck dancer. We'll say, what does that matter with anything? See, back then, we had principles. There was a lot of, I'm like, Charles White said it best. He said, black people will never get to that level of greatness again. It's over with. But, you know what I'm saying? But when I think about the white man, and how, first of all, this movie portrayed black people as very beautiful, inside and out. I, that's one thing I love. The, uh, um, it betrayed the relationship between black men and black women. They stood side by side. That's excellent. And it did betray white people like dang near ghosts and goblins. I'm like, when white people was on screen, because white people are really kind of barely on screen here, but when you've seen white people, you felt it. 
there was no good white people in this movie. At all, you know, how some like that, like that, the secret life of bees. They they got that white girl, or the movie that helped. They got that liberal white girl in there, and she has to, you know, you got to put that good white person in to have white people. No, there was no good white people in this movie. And when they was on the screen, they was like some damn goblins and trolls and and no <laughs> jabberwockies or whatever. I kid you not. And the woman who who played, um, what's that? Uh, Curlin, the white woman who played Curlin, man, that, that that's a gorgeous. She's a lot more attractive than uh, than the real Curlin. You know, and it's this white woman looked almost Asiatic, like half white and half Asiatic because of her eyes. Um, but it's a great flick. I'm um, like, as I said, they they t- touched on things that I didn't think about when it came to Emmett Till. And I think about the NAACP. We consider the NWACP as a joke now. Realize what they do for black people. But back then, you needed the NAACP. I'm like, you go, you black people run around now talking about we ain't our ancestors. We, we, no, you, back then, you dealing with the, the original Pookie and Ray Ray. You're dealing with the white men who wanted all the smoke, especially in Mississippi. They wanted that smoke, you know? roll around and pick up trucks, man. I'm like, bear in mind, these white dudes, not only on they on some buck wild shit, some howdy doody shit, um, they was, they had the protection of the media, of the law, the judge, and the sheriffs would be on some, see, imagine how dangerous Pookie and Ray Ray would be if the police and the judges were all on their side. That's what you're dealing with. So I understand now why they had to go to the NAACP. See, now it's different because us black people, we, we forget our history. We talk about we ain't our ancestors. You wasn't up against... We we, we wait till the, the white man now is like Ned Flanders. Neighborino to the north. I sure like the cut of your gibberish. Cohen doodly Now the white man still gets buck wild. He showed us that. Well, he already showed us that black people don't want no smoke with him. I'm not talking about some drunken white dude saying, hey, you nigger, hey, you fucking, you know, like some way you get knocked out. I'm talking about dudes armed, you know what I'm saying, ready to go, ready to rock and roll, ready to have it locked and loaded. You know, black people wait until, uh, now black people want to buck wild and go crazy. You know, back then you dealing, I'm like, the white man has smoked each, o- each other over a poker game. The white man has smoked, will smoke, uh, Billy Bob will smoke Ricky Bo over a fucking game of horseshoe. Like, man, that's my horse, man, my horseshoe, man, my, they'll, they'll kill each other over a game of poker talk. Like, oh, man, you took the stuff, you know? So imagine what they do to a black person. So you ain't dealing with that kind of white person. Now, you dealing with hiding the old neighbor Ned Flanders, the refined white man. You wasn't dealing with that buck raw white man you, when, when the white man was, was ready for you. Then you, you, you run to the NAACP, which is not a bad thing. Or you go to church and pray, we should all overcome. And then you want to act buck wow now when Ned Flanders come in. Nah, but I'm, I'm ranting on, but it's a good movie. Go watch it.